Okay. Can you hear me all? That's good. Right. I've been challenged by Jeff. Can I do this with one hand and a mic? We'll see. Um, but we're going to come to communion. We're going to do it slightly differently. Um, and we're not doing this to be awkward this morning. Just different. Um, so we come to communion sometimes. I do anyway. And it's a bit familiar. It's a bit like we go through the motions as a church. And I thought, what is it about, really? What is it about? So, back to basics for me, because that's what I like. I like it simple. And, and for me, this is a time to reflect on what God has done in my life and what he promises for the future. It's a solemn time. We remember of him dying, but we remember the hope that is to come and very much... That's the theme of, of this morning when, when you hear the reading later. So, what are the qualifications for you to come to the table? A lot of my team at work are going through study and qualifications at the moment. They get a tick in the box which says they are professionally qualified to do their job. God doesn't need that. He just needs you. You just need to know him as your saviour. The one who reached down because we've all done wrong, I've done wrong, and rescued us. And as long as you know that, and as long as you know Jesus is your saviour and love him with all your heart, your mind, your strength, that's all that's required. But he does ask us to come to the table and reflect. So I'm going to read. Um, It's a familiar passage, but I'm reading from the message um, from 1 Corinthians 11. And then once I've read, you're going to look at a video, see a song, stay seated please, and just use it as time to reflect. And whilst that's going on, Pam and I will serve you the bread and wine. And unlike probably the normal tradition, if you like, um, I'm going to leave it to you as to when you take the bread and drink the wine. Um, once the song's finished and we've had a, a, a period of silence, I'll then close that that period with prayer and then we'll move on okay so hopefully it's not too complicated so the reading is this from 1 Corinthians 11 starting at verse 23 let me go over with you again exactly what goes on in the Lord's Supper and why it is so centrally important I received my instructions from the master himself and passed them on to you the master Jesus on the night of his betrayal took bread Having given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, broken for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he did the same thing with the cup. This cup is my blood, my new covenant with you. Each time you drink this cup, remember me. What you must solemnly realize is that every time you eat the bread and every time you drink this cup, you reenact in your words and actions the death of the master. You'll be drawn back to this meal again and again until the master returns. You must never let familiarity breed contempt. Anyone who eats the bread or drinks the cup of the master irreverently is like part of the crowd that jeered and spit on him at his death. Is that the kind of remembrance you want to be part of? Examine your motives. Test your heart. Come to this meal in holy awe. If you give no thought or worse, don't care, about the broken body of the master when you eat and drink, you're running the risk of serious consequences. That's why so many of you, even now, are listless and sick, and others have gone to an early grave. If we get this straight now, we won't have to be straightened out later on. Better to be confronted by the master now than to face a fiery confrontation later. And that's Paul speaking to the disciples. Okay, so, whilst you listen to this song then, Pam and I will serve the, uh, the bread and the wine. 